Yeah, let's do it, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, for coming, for joining, you know, everybody online. Thanks for dialing in. Thanks for sponsors, you know, for the beers. Yeah, don't forget the beer. Yeah. Um, this is my first talk, so be gentle. And um, I would invite every engineer, junior engineer, to kind of present, come up with a, a warm up talk for heavy, heavy duty guys that uh, will follow. Um, yeah, there will be simple talk about um, it's a, um, how to make an awesome GitHub page, but I'll butcher everything TDD, Jamstack, Bash scripting, CI, CD, GitHub actions. Yeah, it will be a bit more interactive talk, so I'll, I'll hope I'll keep you excited. Um, a little bit of it myself. Um, this is my presentation. It's all in Markdown and Obsidian. Let's start it. So, my name is Anton. Uh, my birthday, as you can see, is coming <laughs> this weekend. Uh, I'm a software engineer, junior 10x developer. I put it today. Uh, cybersecurity stuntman uh, since last week, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a civil engineer in the, by the background. I spent like 10, 15 years in civil engineering. And uh, during COVID, I switched careers to software engineering. Yeah. I played with HTML and early uh, web, like in 2000s, 90s. And uh, my my parents forced me to take civil engineering, and now now I'm back to my passion. Um, yeah, CSS was to blame, <laughs> to be honest. To take in civil engineering. Yeah, so yeah, I've got this little web page that is very similar to this Markdown file, and uh, I already have it open. So yeah, you can find more about me on my uh, friend Lynn's, uh website. I've got some different posts, um, some sections about learning with the useful links. Hacking, yeah, with the hacking um, security advice of the day, I would say don't connect to unknown networks. If you all can open your Wi-Fi on your phones, you can see quite a cool uh, performance in uh, local networks. So um, similar. Uh, it's not working. Yeah, apologies. We don't even move to the next one. Um, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to spin up a, a, a booby trap, you know, with my little uh, hacking devices and trying to fish somebody to connect. So um, we'll see, we'll come back to it later. Uh, back to presentation. Um, this is my um, yeah, as my my page, my GitHub is very similar to this. It also uses Markdown, and you notice it's a bit different. Uh, from traditional GitHub page. And that's what we're going to talk about, how to make, you know, this awesome uh, readme file. You know, it talks about uh, my background, what tools do I use, I play with Python, uh, my hackathons, uh, you know, my GitHub stats. Um, yeah, some uh, pinned uh, repositories like Metasploit framework for hacking. Um, it's a bit kind of rich, you know, it's it's a bit more rich than, uh, you know, this page <laughs> it just shows <laughs> three or four the trees. Um, yeah, so I, I'll just uh, walk you through it, how we do it. So we'll, we'll do it from scratch, you know, start a new user, uh, you know, GitHub account, and uh, we'll work from there. Uh, so let's imagine uh, we have this uh, Terry guy. Uh, he's been coding for 20 years. He's a 100% 10x uh, developer. Uh, um, and he wants a similar page. So um, I created a little uh, rubber ducky account for this guy. And uh, yeah, he has a uh, one repository. Uh, he invented his own language. He invented his own operating system called Temple S written in Holy C. And it's the whole purpose of it is just to talk to God on 64 cores. <laughs> um, if you know, you know. Um, so the quickest shortcut how to do it is to create a readme file uh, in a hidden repository uh, named as your username. Um, you essentially create like a repository on a GitHub account, you know, with your username as the name of the repository and create a readme file. But this would be a too easy, too easy to present it. So we want to test drive it. So for this year, I decided to uh, focus uh, you know, on coding and test driving. And I thought, you know, 80 to 95% of my code will be test driven. And uh, I'll try to kind of stick to this promise uh, in this presentation as well. And um, 
like I talked to kind of some graduates and, you know, I hear like online a lot of discussion, you know, test driving is hard, you know, you need tools, you need RSpec, you need mini tests, you need to know how to test drive. And then um, last year I've seen a presentation, the guy test driving using Commodore 64, you know, just using colors, you know, green and red, you know, for red. It's pretty much the same kind of, yeah, if else, you know, if, you know, uh, at the end of the day. So, you know, yeah, they asked me, oh, like, that's that's my reaction, you know. Oh no. Anyways, <laughs> we have we have this bash script, you know, like you know, if true, then you know, and we can echo it, you know, to say whatever we want. Um let, let, let's try it. So basically I have the snapshot of uh, curl simple bash script, you know, which is uh, I'll walk you through it. It's uh we just go into this website, you know, we go into GitHub, uh uh, we scrape the content of this web page and we search for some content, you know, gra using grep. Uh, I'm currently working on policy, whatever you want. And then, you know, if it worked, it worked, you know, we we we, do, we open in terminal, a nice message. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, and we can try it. So yeah, it didn't work. Um, I'm using emojis, you know, with the best, you should be very careful with the banks. Yeah, so if you use bang, it will uh, copy the uh, previous script. So be careful, yeah, don't don't get too excited. Um, and another thing that I caught, you know, during my test drive and uh, practice, um, like return meaningful outputs, you know, return exit codes, you know, that uh, machines can understand that you can put in a CI, CD, uh, you need to return like a error or number, you know, the status, you know, of the final uh, output. So here I say exit code zero, which is success. Uh, and like you can do return one if you don't want to exit because in my terminal, if I put exit, it will close the terminal with exit code zero. You don't want to do it for the purpose of this presentation. And sometimes since uh, you can return one. Um, yeah, so as I said, machines don't understand emojis, you know, unless it's an emoji code. And uh, yeah, let's dwell into that. Uh, have you heard about emoji code, anybody? No, yeah, I'll, I'll demonstrate you, yeah, play with it. Yeah, I have this little hello world <laughs> demo uh, with the file extension of a grape. <laughs> we can see the, the content of this file. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's simple as that. And uh, yeah, we can execute it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a funny, it's a funny, funny, funny language to play it. But yeah, unless it's a module code, be careful uh, <laughs> with the exit code. So, and on the side note, yeah, you know, this is quite boring. You know, we can use, instead of text output, we can use images in terminal. If you heard about image cat, it's similar to cat, but you know, for images <laughs> for a terminal. So yeah, let's try that. So yeah, let's try to scrape, uh, to call this uh, file on the web, a field zero do whatever it is, dot PNG, and uh, we can uh, see what it does. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's do that for both success and fail messages. Yeah, so yeah, just, just, just to keep us going. Um, and now we can update our script uh, with all this um, success and veil messages. And yeah, we've got a bit of a testing kind of scenario, simple testing scenarios. So that's what we want to do. So yeah, back to implementation. Um, let's create a repository. Uh, I'll walk you through it. So what do we do? We go to our uh, repositories. Uh, Click new. We've got this guy, Terry, Terry developer, Terry, Terry, dash D, and watch this. What's happening? Oh la la, we unlocked a secret repository, you know, yeah, special repository uh, that you need to add a README file. And uh, yeah, it will be simple markdown to uh, edit and it will be displayed on your profile, right? Yeah, we need to add a README file. You want to make it public. We don't want any ignores and we don't care about the licenses. Um, cool, look at that. Now we have this high there. Uh, we can go to our profile and now we have a high there. Yeah, it's, it's um, 
simple as that. And now you can populate this little file with your know, CV, with your uh, stats, with whatever. And uh, yeah, let's let it populate. it populates you with some filler text that we don't really care of. But yeah, we care about what, what do we care? Early program on policy. Yeah, let's do that and um, see if it um, fixes our build. You know, using our local script. All right. Cool. Success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great success. Um, but yeah, this is local. This is pretty much kind of low productivity. You don't really want to kind of run the local scripts. You know, we all like CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. So you want to automate as much stuff as you want. You don't want to run this uh, script, you know, manually every time. So ideally, what do you want to do? And I highly recommend to use it just actions, GitHub actions. It's this step here, you know, where you your repository and you can click here. Um, it gives you a plethora of different options with uh, different integrations, different framework, different languages, uh, dockers, you name it. Yeah, I would suggest to start, you know, with a scratch, you know, simple workflow configure. You'll see it is a simple YAML file that uh, like industry standard, it gives you like uh, a simple workflow of uh, name on jobs, uh, it runs on Ubuntu and it has some steps and it uh, gives you an example at the end of the file, you know, with the script, you know, like run echo, hello world, you know, similar stuff that we've done. You can do it single line or multi-line. We don't really need a single line. So yeah, let's name it, um, I don't know, TDD, test drive, test, uh, test Ruby. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to insert some script instead of this echo at another line. And um, what I'll do, I've got it already here with exit codes. Um, you know, for GitHub, I use, uh, you know, it works because we don't have image cat. We have to install it, you know, for GitHub. It's, it will be a nightmare. Just, just use a simple text output. Um, yeah, and let's do it here. Same script that we ran originally. Um, and uh, we call our page, we grab it, you know, I love Ruby too. Uh, and then we have a worked exit code one, and if it doesn't work, exit code one, and exit code zero if it worked. Start commit, boom. And we're test driving it. So basically now you'll see if you go to a repository, um, you'll see this little yellow icon, you know, it's quite familiar for you. It genuinely shows you GitHub actions and it indicates that it's uh, currently working. And if it breaks, it gives you a cross. And if it's green, you know, it's, it's all green, green tick. So yeah, we can click here and we can see, uh, you know, we're setting up the job, you know, according to uh, the specifier and we get this uh, run a multi-line script. Uh, the name of our build, uh, yeah, it says like exited with code one. So let's fix it. So what are we looking here? I love Ruby too. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, let's fix this uh, broken build and uh, test drive it. And as I said, I'm not using any code editor. I'm just using terminal and the build and GitHub stuff. Uh, you don't have an excuse not to test drive it. Right, and uh, contribution, we go back to code thinking and in a moment it will um, return us a green tick but i'll continue with my presentation um, uh, yep we've got a green tick cool this is pretty much it yeah so in order to kind of make it a bit rich and show a bit more stats uh, on your um, push request pull request um and compete with chat gpt and you know copilot and uh, yeah you need to kind of stand out guys and uh, i highly recommend this uh, little repository on uh, github called uh, github readme stats it's a simple uh, plugin um if you go to this uh, github page um it will tell you all all all, all you need to know about uh, like what, what you need to add to the string you basically take a link put your username Put some uh, queries uh, to, to 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 this uh, to this link and you know customize the color whatever you want to see. Um, yeah, I already customized it, but yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, and let's try to do it. Let's try to copy it and append it to our um, 
readme file and see what it brings us. Boom. You know, open source, total issues, you know, total commits, 2023, five. Oh, that's a lot. Um, yeah, um, and this pretty much brings us to, to a new kind of, you know, concept of um, uh, Gemstack and, you know, how you de deploy static websites. Uh, um, the first branch to deploy this website using GitHub pages, I would suggest is go into, uh, because currently it's on GitHub, it's on your personal page. But if you want to link it to your personal domain or have a personal web page with all this GitHub stuff, uh, just just your readme, you can go to this repository. Um, you can uh, click settings, go into settings, pages, and uh, deploy from branch. Uh, deploy from branch. And uh, that's a main branch, whatever your branch is. Um, and uh, we will see another GitHub action for the deploy. Uh, there will be two GitHub actions, um, CI uh, that we kind of coded, and then page build deployment. You know, if, if the code passes, it will uh, build a page for you and put it um, on your profile. So yeah, we'll give it some time to think. Um, and yeah, it will be kind of an early version of a Gemstack. Um, Gemstack is a um, like development paradigm, which is abbreviated to JavaScript API and Markdown. So basically, you have a JavaScript, you know, file, you know, to kind of state all your behaviors and the API for more complicated stuff, maps, databases, whatever you want. And you have a Markdown for all of your content. You know, you can't manipulate it. It's just you state a Markdown. Uh, simple file with a header, you know, how you want to format it, you know, what template you want to use. And um, yeah, it will, um, um, it will be, um, yeah, it will spill out a good website. So before we do it, I'll show you, yeah, environments, GitHub pages, we can go here. Now we have our personal web page. You can link it to your own domain, your deployment. Cool. We've got our little web page, you know, using readme. Um, if you want to spice it up with the menus, as I said, from Gemstack uh, um, uh, stack, uh, we can use Jekyll, which is a Ruby written uh, Gemstack framework. Um, and it's used by default uh, on GitHub. Highly recommend you to look into it. Uh, one note that I think it's fully supported these days, uh, but it's it's still working. I enjoy working on it to, in order to, and uh, to make it work, you need to create a config file for the gem stack, for the Jekyll. Yeah, go uh, config YAML. Let's do that weekly and um, add file, create new file. Boom, config YAML. What do you want to put? Theme minima. Uh, there are millions of themes for uh, for this gem stack, for this Jekyll. Uh, I just picked whatever was easy. And um, it will take some time to process it, I guess. Yeah, it, it's thinking. But after some time, you'll see some defaults like a menu bar appear, footer uh, from this theme minimum that can manipulate it at the latest stage and apply universal uh, styling for your um, for your GitHub. Uh, yeah, let, let me refresh it but in the meantime. Uh, in the meantime. Yeah, in the meantime, I'll show you another trick, uh, <laughs> cybersecurity tip <laughs> 1. 1.1. Uh, don't let people to connect to your laptop, uh, never, even if they want to charge your hotspot, simply because uh, I can do pretty much this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, before we finish presentation, um, yeah, we've got a tick. So yeah, this is our old page, you know, just a pure readme deployed on GitHub. Uh, if you had some uh, Gemstack flavor to it that has like some default JavaScript, well, let's refresh it. 
you'll see all this fancy stuff that you can click. Uh, it has some basic mechanism for filtering your posts. You know, if you create new posts here, you can read more about it. They all appear at the bottom, you have footers. So yeah, that's essentially it. You know, it's easy as writing a markdown with some defaults uh, picked up from this Jekyll. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much sums up my presentation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was. Anybody has questions? Should I unmute myself? Um, how come you got a Jekyll site? Written by the same guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'll I'll just repeat what I said. Uh, Jekyll. Uh, why I use Jekyll and how it picked up. Uh, Jekyll is a default go-to for GitHub pages. Uh, that's why it was able to quickly pick up uh, this config YAML file and. Um, um, yeah, spit out a Jekyll, um, you know, website, you know, with this default minima theme uh, things. Yeah, uh, there are other things other than Jekyll for the Jamstack. Uh, alternative to Jekyll, I would say, um, written by the same guy is, uh, sorry, where is my page? Uh, it's a Bridgetown. Yeah, I had it somewhere. Yeah, Bridgetown. Yeah, this 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 thing. Uh, I haven't looked at it. It's written in Ruby by the same guy, so I would assume it's as good. But Jekyll is good good enough for me. Jekyll doesn't run on Ruby three, unfortunately. I just locked it to two seven four, I think, and it's it's pretty secure. I would say just the markdown. Yeah, you can't really intercept it or do anything with it. And the rest of the integrations with it, with the galleries of maps, you use APIs, then it's completely detached from. Yeah. Coolio. Yeah. Hmm. How I for the scripts? Oh, it's my little Tamagotchi. Yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm into cybersecurity. So I bought this little toy. Yeah, which kind of yeah has a little dolphin. You know, oh, I can It's filtering it. So basically, it's like little Tamagotchi from Japan that we're all familiar with from nineties. Uh, it has a. I don't know. Yeah. I oh yeah, I can show you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's dolphin. Yeah, you see, it's dolphin. It shows like a mode, you know, it's level four, you know. So basically, it's a uh, hacking multi tool. Yeah, yeah, you can you have NFC to it, you have a bad USB, you have, uh, you know, like UB key simulation, you have infrared that, you know, you can like, you know, uh, air cons, you know, things to what, you know, like <laughs> cool things down a little bit. Um, yeah, it has a, a lot of things. It started on a Kickstarter um, as a simple kind of key, but then they kind of. And they put more and more stuff like RFIDs, NFCs, and two development work that I have here ESP32 that enables your Wi Fi um, um, integration, and you can flash it with some hack and firmware. And um, yeah, I'll demonstrate you what didn't work. You can do auth if you know the like basically do auth and is uh, you know, if you have a Wi Fi network, you know, you know the name. Uh, and you send the auth signal and completely ruins the day for somebody because you can't really jam the auth jamming. But yeah, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm 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 creating spinning up a dummy Wi-Fi networks. Hopefully it works this time. Um and uh, yeah, we, we'll see. Yeah, you see Rick Roll, you know, it's starting to spin up if you can see. Uh, yeah, let's refresh it. I'm not quite sure how to refresh it. Um but yeah, it's spinning all this uh dummy networks you know and it can it can be a trap so i would suggest you not to connect to public um yeah never gonna give you up 
yeah, yeah, it can connect to those. It's pretty safe. I don't do dangerous stuff, but it's kind of yeah. Can? <laughs> can? Oh yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, which one is that? Is it number four? Yeah, I tried yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all kind of yeah uh, demo stuff. Yeah, but happy to pair if anybody wants to. I'm very new to it. Yeah. I wasn't able to connect it. I thought I, I don't think it gives you IP address and yeah, it doesn't complete exchange. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you connect, so yeah, let me know. Yeah, yeah, it must be lucky. For me, it stuck into this connecting thing. Maybe it shows you like it's connected, but it just still is like, yeah, I'm connecting. I'm doing this exchange. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely lose connection if, if I connect to one of those. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Thank you.